Howdy y'all, welcome back to Lil Bits. This is probably a strange sight for everybody. I'm in a Windows machine today. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use terminal emulators to connect to our serial devices, which are our 8-bit computers in this case. Now you can use this to connect to any kind of serial device, but in this case we're connecting to our 8-bit computers, typically a Small Computer Central or a Zeal 8-bit computer or something similar to that. <clears throat> For our Windows users, I know it's not necessarily as approachable. It can be a little difficult to find tools for development sometimes, but fortunately, Windows has a tool called TerraTerm, and TerraTerm is an open source terminal emulator that can do pretty much anything Minicom can do. It can do SSH connections, it can do Telnet connections, it can do custom connections if you have SSH or Telnet running over a non-standard port, or if you have uh, some custom protocol you're working on, and of course it can do serial connections. Now you'll see that COM3 is already populated. Now COM3 is a USB to serial device that happens to be an FTDI device, and that's what we're using to connect to our computers. It will translate USB serial communication into regular serial communication, in this case, UART, into UART communication specifically. And that allows us to communicate with the machines. Now we want to do a serial connection we want to connect to COM3. If you have more than one FTDI cable plugged into your machine, you will see more than just COM3 here. But COM3 is typically the first one you'll find. And um, it's the only one I have, so it's the only one my computer sees right now. So I'll click OK. Now I want to set up the serial session, the serial port, before I go ahead and connect. Uh, I'm technically connected right now, but I haven't turned on the system. Um, but the system doesn't run at this default 9600 baud. It runs at 115 or 115,200 baud. So we're going to connect to that, or we're going to configure it for that, and then we're going to turn the system on. Beep boop, small computer monitor. Now this is the same computer I used in the last video, so I can go ahead and send it a file. And when I was using Minicom, I was using I was issuing commands via the keyboard. And so this time though, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna send a file via the file menu. Send file. Now we're gonna go ahead and find a file that I've already prepared. It should be in my source code directory. Uh, this is the same file I've been working with basically. I actually, so Mage's fourth here is a hard fork of Collapse OS that I am going to work on from a specific version of it. I've talked to the author of Collapse OS since I, since I made my last video and he's still maintaining it. So I wanted to fork off of this version and then continue using Collapse OS off of his versions, which are quite a bit different at this point and maintain this as Mage's fourth. So it's called Mage's fourth now, but it's still the same operating system. It's still GPL3, you know, I'm allowed to fork it, I'm allowed to do whatever I want with it, as long as I provide my changes back upstream to the original author when they ask for them, and as long as I provide source code to end users who use the product, so, uh, which I will always do. So we're gonna go ahead and find the finished file. We wanna go to Arch, then we're gonna go to Z80, you can tell I'm used to navigating via a command line. And then we have our OS with loader.hex. We're gonna send it. Ready. You see it's a little different than our last one. It said ready and okay, it didn't ask for us to press any buttons. So we're gonna switch over to our RAM. We're gonna reset. Boom, mages fourth, okay. You can see I already changed the code so that it doesn't say collapse OS anymore, but it is still collapse OS. You still do things in like reverse Polish notation, if I want to check where here is. Uh, it's still in 2000 hex, um, because like I said, I've, I'm doing the paging. That is in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and give that a look. Uh, also, give this one a like and subscribe, why don't you? It really helps the channel out, seriously. Anyway, we will move on to other 
platforms. Now the sharp eyed among you might have noticed that I'm not doing this on a native Windows machine. I'm doing this on a virtual machine. So how do you do this on a virtual machine? I'm literally running a Linux host with a Windows guest on it. And this Windows guest is using something called USB pass through. Now this is going to be important for a video I'm doing later where we're going to come We're going to program the EZ80 microcontroller. We're going to use the Aegon Lite and we're going to use a development board that I have. And in order to do that, we have to be in Windows because the USB cable that I'm using is only compatible with Windows. It's unfortunate too because the software development environment for EZ80 works in Wine, but the cable doesn't work in Wine. So we have to have this Windows virtual machine. Furthermore, Small Computer Workshop only works in Windows. It doesn't work in Wine. I couldn't get it to run in Wine. It's looking for a printer for some reason and it fails to launch because it can't find a printer. And there's no reason for it to do that, honestly. But um, the fact of the matter is that I need Windows to run this. We will go ahead and use this virtual machine and we will use the USB pass-through. Now, how do you do USB pass-through? Let's take a look. First, I wanna shut this machine down. And once it's shut down, I can go ahead, I can change the settings of the machine. And in order to do that, I have to open the virtual box control panel. I don't know if control panel is the right word for it, but virtual box. This is the virtual box interface. You can see my defined virtual machine here. I call it Win 10 Dev. That's a name that I named it. Right. And if I want to change settings, I can go to settings and I could go look at USB. You can see here I have a USB device that I've passed through. Now in order to do this, you have to install first VirtualBox and then you have to install second the VirtualBox extensions. Now if you go to the VirtualBox website, you will find all the instructions for doing that. It's very straightforward, it's very easy to do. I actually usually use KVM on my Linux hosts, but I'm having trouble with KVM and USB pass-through right now. It's my own fault. I don't have things configured correctly. So I went ahead and used VirtualBox so that I could demonstrate these things. VirtualBox is the most likely virtualizer that you will be using, particularly on Windows, unless you're using Microsoft Hyper-V, which uh, you need Windows Pro to use. So there's that. That's how you do pass-through. If we wanted to add another device, you can see I have a ZSA Ergodox ED. That's easy. That's my keyboard. If I wanted the keyboard to be completely taken over by the uh, Windows host, uh, which would be problematic, I could pass it through to the Windows host. As far as it's concerned, here's our original. This is the, the one that's set up here. So if I wanted to add it, I would click it and add it. Now there's two. We don't need two, so I'll delete one. Um, but yeah, so if I, I could add as many FTDI controllers as I wanted to to this list, I could pass through as many USB devices as I want to. Once it's passed through, the guest machine will treat it as though it is physically connected to hardware and the host machine will not have the same kind of access to it. So don't try to use it from both Linux and a Windows guest or Linux and a Linux guest or Windows and a Linux guest. So there's a some some background around that. Next, we'll look at Minicom, the tool I was using last time, and talk about what commands I was issuing. All right, let's see you over there. All right, here we are back on our Linux host. We're gonna use Minicom this time. Minicom is a good little program that can do a ton of stuff. It's basically the same thing as TerraTerm except a command line tool. And um, we are going to use it to connect to the same exact device via the same exact FTDI connection. So in this case, our device is called something different. It's TTY U U S oh no, it's dev TTY USB zero. Now you see I did tab completion. If I had had multiples, it would have stopped here. And if I had continued to do tab completion, it would have listed out, uh, you know, zero, one, two, three, however many there were. But I only have one plugged in right now. I often have more than one plugged in. So this is important to know. Um, when this capital D says, we're, this is the device we're trying to connect to. We also want to give it the baud rate we want to connect at. 115200 is our baud rate. So then we connect. 
Now, Minicom gives us a little message. If we want to look at the help menu, we can sit control A followed by Z just by itself. No control Z, just control. And you can see all these things that you can do with ter with uh, not Terra term with Minicom. You can configure Minicom. You can you can change um, you know serial port settings on the fly if I needed to change the baud speed, for example. And from this help menu, you can just hit any of these letters. If I wanted to configure Minicom, for example, I could hit O. And it shows me various options to configure Minicom. For example, if I wanted to change the serial port speed, well, I could change the serial port speed. If I wanted it to change, I could hit E. If I wanted to change to the default uh, C, D, or E settings, I can hit those. Or I can go up and down by hitting B and A for previous and next. Well, we want, you know, we want E. We're, we were already set to it. So even if you set your baud wrong when you first enter, you don't have to end that session to change it, right? Now, I do want to talk a little bit about screen. Uh, a lot of us use screen to connect to systems and keep that connection alive. And one of the things that you can do now here, I'm hitting control A followed by X, and that allows me to leave Minicom. If I wanted to connect with screen, I would do the same thing. I would tell it I want dev TTY USB zero, except in this case, we're just telling screen, we're giving screen a parameter and we're not using any option flags. We also don't use an option flag for the baud rate. We just set it up there and then we can hit enter. Now, if I turn the computer off and back on, now in screen, we don't have all the options that we have in Minicom. We can communicate with the, with the computer, but we can't necessarily send files. There's not a lot we can do in the terms of sending files. The screen is not meant for uh, communicating with serial lines. It just can do it. So when we want to actually do complex stuff, and here I can hit Control A and capital K to kill this window, to exit screen. Screen is different from Minicom, so the commands are all different. But if we wanted to use, if we wanted to be able to send files, we really want something like Minicom. So we can turn it off and turn it back on. Sometimes you'll see that when you turn it off, floating lines during the process of turning off will cause the FTDI line to read data as though it's there. If we want to clear the screen, we can hit Control A followed by C. It clears the screen. We can turn it back on. You don't have to clear the screen necessarily. Um, a lot of these will print a new line. You can see this prints a couple new lines before it, it it prints its message, just so it'll clear out any kind of garbage that got left behind the last time you turned it off. See, there's some garbage. Oop. So, you know, small computer central accounts for that. It's like, all right, we don't want you being so annoyed that you have to clear your screen every time. So we're gonna give you some space. <laughs> prints a full new line. Actually, probably two, because this is probably a new line as well that came from here. Um, anyway, so that's, I mean, that's pretty simple. And if I want to send a file, I hit Control A followed by S, and then I can pick what kind of communication protocol I want. In this case, if we wanted to look a little further, you can see if we look at the help system, there's our send file command. So that's how I know that it's Control A followed by an S. Any of these commands that you see in the help menu, you can hit Control A followed by that letter to do the process. If the help menu is open, you can just hit the letter. So I can just hit S right now. And then from there, we can send our files. This is the same exact way that TerraTerm was sending the file. It's, it's literally sending an ASCII file. It's 100% identical in terms of electrical signals that we're going to see here. Z80 RC and there's that same exact file. I can send it. Now that cr cannot create lock file. That's not an error. Uh, Minicom itself wants to create a lock file for other Minicom sessions to see, but it doesn't have permissions to write to that directory. So it's always going to tell me failure to make lock file. I could give it permissions, but I don't care, so I haven't. 
This time it's asking us to press enter, but you see this is that same exact ready message that we got last time. All right, now I can switch over and I can reboot. And there's fourth collapse. Okay, now you saw it boot as soon as I switched over. Sometimes that can happen. If it just so happens that when you switch over while it's still running from the ROM to the RAM, that it will land at a point where it ends up jumping back to the start of the of the set of the memory and starting the system up correctly. I don't assume it started up correctly just because I got a message, so I still like to hit that reset button when I do this, even though I know that there's a chance that, you know, it's fine. But yeah, there we go. That's how you use the terminals. Uh, screen is easy and quick. Minicom is easy and robust. And TerraTerm is probably the easiest of them all, although it, the settings can be a little confusing. But, uh, you know, you can click around and find stuff easily, so that's good. All right, thanks again, everybody. That's all I'm going to cover today. I really appreciate y'all's time, and especially the last video's response was amazing. Um, y'all just keep living life having a good time, enjoy developing on your tiny computers. Peace.